This video is on recurrence relations. This is a type of sequence that's completely different to what we've seen so far. It's not like an arithmetic or geometric sequence, and it comes up a lot. I've seen a lot of questions that like to ask about it. A recurrence relation is when the next term is defined by the previous term. There's no constant rule like an arithmetic or geometric. It's all dependent on whatever the last term is. So a recurrence relation is of the form u of n plus 1 is equal to a function of un like this. What this means is the term n plus 1 is defined by a function of the term n, so the term just before it. And with recurrence relations we have to say what the first term in the sequence is, so u1, and we'll say it's something like k, as we have to have a starting point. We talked about this un notation in the arithmetic sequences video, but it's just a shorthand way of saying this is term 1, this is term two, this is term three, etc. So let's do an example of a recurrence relation. Let's say that u of n plus one is equal to three of u n plus six. And as I said, you need to have a starting point. So let's say that the first term u one is equal to two. So the first term is equal to two. So the second term is going to be defined by the first term, u1. And what we're going to do is we're going to sub u1 into this in order to get out u2. Because un is equal to u1, so u of n plus 1 is going to be 1 plus 1, so it's going to be u2. So if we sub u1 into this, it's going to be 3 times u1, so 2, because u1 is equal to 2, plus 6, which is equal to 6 plus 6 which is equal to 12. So u2 is equal to 12. The second term in the sequence is equal to 12. And then the third term in the sequence is going to be defined by the second term in the sequence, 12. And we're going to sub 12 into this in order to get out the third term in the sequence, un plus 1. So it's going to be 3 of 12 plus 6, which is equal to 36 plus 6, which is equal to 42. So the third term in the sequence is equal to 42. And then the fourth term in the sequence, u4, is equal to what happens when we sub the third term, 42, into this. So it's going to be 3 times 42 plus 6, which if you put into a calculator is equal to 132. So the fourth term in the sequence is equal to 132. And we can see that this is not like an arithmetic or geometric sequence, as it doesn't have a common ratio or difference between multiple terms. And this is normally the case with recurrence relations. Again, I have to stress, this is completely different to arithmetic or geometric sequences. So here's an example question of a recurrence relation where u of n plus 1 is defined by a function of u n, as again, they have to give us the first term because it has to be a starting point, and it wants us to find u4. So u1 is equal to 4. So u2 is going to be defined by u1, and it's going to go into this formula. So u2 is going to be equal to un squared, so 4 squared, minus 5 over 2 times 4. And if you put that into a calculator, that is equal to 6. So the second term is 6, so it's 4, 6 so far. And then u3 is going to be equal to, and then you put 6 into this formula, the second term to get the third term, so it's going to be 6 squared minus 5 over 2, 6, and if you put that into a calculator, that is equal to 21, so the third term is 21, and then the fourth term is going to be defined by the third term, 21, it's going to go into this here, so it's going to be 21 squared minus 5 over 2, 21, and if you put that into a calculator, that is equal to 777 over 2. So the fourth term is 777 over 2, and that's the specific term they want, the fourth term. And that's the final answer. I just want to emphasize again that it makes weird sequences that are not arithmetic or geometric. So this part of the video is separate to recurrence relations, there just wasn't enough content here to make a video on its own. This is for sequences in general, so arithmetic, geometric and recurrence. Sequences can be classed into different types. The first type is an increasing sequence. And this is when in the sequence the terms keep getting bigger and bigger. The more formal way of writing this is when u of n plus 1 is bigger than un for all values of n. 
technically when we say all values of n we actually mean all natural numbers if you don't know what a natural number is it's just positive integers so one two three etc as obviously n cannot be equal to a half as you can't have like half of a term or something like that so for example if we have a sequence defined by u n is equal to 2 n so if you sub the values of n starting from 1 the sequence would be 2 4 6 8 and then 10 and then it would go on and on like that we can see that this is an arithmetic sequence and this is also an increasing sequence because the terms keep getting bigger 8 is bigger than 6 10 is bigger than 8 and so on Another type of increasing sequence that is also that is specifically mentioned on the spec is un is equal to 2 to the power of n. If you sub in the values of n starting from 1, it's going to be 2, 4, and then 8, and then 16, and then 32, and then so on and so forth. This is an increasing sequence because the terms keep getting bigger. The second type of sequence is a decreasing sequence. And this is when the terms keep getting smaller and smaller. The more technical way of saying this is when u of n plus 1 is less than un for all values of n. For example, if we had un defined by 7 minus 3n and we started subbing in values of n we would get so the first value would be 4 and then it would be 1 and then it would be minus 2 and then minus 5 and then minus 8 and it would keep going on like that this is a decreasing sequence because the terms are getting smaller an example that's specifically mentioned on the spec is un is equal to 3n plus 1 under one like this this is quite a weird sequence i don't know why it's given this example on the spec as it's not something we've covered but if you sub the values of n in you get one over four and then one over seven and then one over ten one over thirteen one over sixteen etc this is a decreasing sequence because the terms are getting smaller and smaller the final type of sequence is called a periodic sequence And this is quite a unique type of sequence. A periodic sequence is when the terms repeat in a cycle. So, for example, if we have the recurrence relation u of n plus 1 is equal to 1 over un, this is a recurrence relation you can tell because the next term here is defined by the previous term in the sequence here. Um, if you see u, uh, a u of n plus 1 anywhere, it's always a recurrence relation. Remember, we need a starting point for recurrence relation, so we'll say that the first term u1 is equal to 3. If we write out the sequence, so the first term is 3, the second term is going to be 1 over 3, so it's going to be 1 over 3, and then the third term is going to be 1 divided by 1 over 3, which flips this fraction here to 1 times 3, which is going to be equal to 3 like this, and then the fourth term is going to be 1 over 3, so it's going to be 1 over 3, and then the fifth term is going to be 1 divided by 1 over 3, so again it's going to be 3, and then it's going to be 1 over 3, and then it's going to keep going on like this. This is a periodic sequence because it keeps repeating repeating itself in a cycle. Another example that is specifically mentioned on the spec is when un is equal to cos of 90. Um, and again, this is a bit of a weird example uh, because it's not something that we specifically um, covered. If um, we start writing out this sequence, so starting from n is equal to 1, so it's going to be cos 90, so it's going to be 0, and then it's going to be cos 180, so it's going to be minus 1, then it's going to be 0, and then it's going to be 1, then it's going to be 0, and then it's going to be minus 1, and then 0, and then 1, and then 0, and it's going to keep going on like this. This is a periodic sequence because it repeats itself in a cycle. This is one cycle and then this is another cycle and then it keeps going on like this. If we did another four terms it would be minus one zero one zero. It has each of um, these cycles. Now something that is a feature of periodic sequences is something called the order of a periodic sequence. The order of a periodic sequence is how many terms there are in a cycle. So how many terms there are until the cycle starts over. So for this sequence here, it is going to be 
two because in each cycle it's three and then one over three so there are two terms in each cycle like this for this sequence here we can see that there are four terms in each cycle like this minus one zero one zero and then it starts over again so minus one zero one zero and then it starts over again with a new cycle so the order is equal to four there are four terms in each cycle and um, don't be tempted by saying that the, um, the order could be two because you can see it's zero one and then it goes to zero again because that's not the full cycle because then it goes to minus one so that's not a complete cycle because these these two are not um, the same thing. It goes 0, 1, 0, minus 1. So that is the full cycle. So it has an order of 4. So here's a couple of questions on recurrence relations. So pause the video, have a go, and I'll go through the answers in about 5 seconds. So for question one, part A, we're told that the first term is one and that the recurrence relation is this function here. And we need to find an expression for x2 in terms of k. So x2 is going to be equal to, and it's going to be um, dependent on x1, which we're going to sub into here. So it is going to be xn, so that's going to be one squared, minus kxn, so it's going to be minus k times one, so it's just going to be k, and this is going to be equal to one minus k. So x2 is equal to one minus k. And for part b, we need to show that the third term x3 is equal to this, so we need to plug x2 into this to get um, x3. So it's going to be x3 is equal to, and then it's going to be x2 squared, so it's going to be one minus k squared, and then minus k, and then xn, so it's going to be minus k, 1 minus k like this. So this is going to be equal to, if we expand the brackets, it's going to be 1 minus 2k plus k squared. And then if we expand this bracket here, it's going to be minus k plus k squared like this. We can do simplifying to do 2k squared minus 3k plus 1, which is what's required just in a different kind of written way. So the third term is k squared minus 3k plus 1. And then for part C, we're told that x3, the third term, is equal to 1, and we need to calculate the value of k, so therefore this here is equal to 1. So 2k squared minus 3k plus 1 is equal to 1. Move the 1 onto the other side to get 2k squared minus 3k is equal to 0, and therefore we can factorise the k out to so do k of 2k minus 3 is equal to 0. So therefore k can be two things. k can be equal to 0, or k can be equal to 3 over 2. However, we're told that k is not equal to 0. So therefore, k can only be equal to one value, which is 3 over 2. And then for part D, we need to find the value of this sigma notation here. So it has this xn, and it has n is equal to 1. So it's going to be n is equal to 1, n is equal to 2, n is equal to 3, n is equal to 4. So we need to find x1 plus x2 plus x3, and so on and so forth like that, which are the terms that are given out here. So what this question is asking is just to add all of the terms that are given out of this up to um, x100, um, like this. So this is quite a common exam question to ask something like this. Now, I said right at the start of recurrence relations, is normally the sequences are getting, uh, that are given out are quite odd and they're usually not arithmetic or geometric. So we can't really use um, Sn in order to figure out this. The way that it's going to work is there's usually going to be some sort of pattern. It might usually be periodic, but there might be some sort of pattern in which you can figure out in order to do it. So the best way to do this is just to write out the sequence like we did before. Convert the sigma notation, as we talked about in the sigma notation video, convert this into a series and then figure it out from there. Okay, so let's start by writing out the terms. So x1 we know, x1 is equal to 1. x2 is equal to 1 minus k, but now we know k, we know that x2 is going to be equal to 1 minus k, so 3 over 2, and, if, and this is equal to minus a half. And then x3 is equal to this, and we know that k is equal to 3 over 2, so it's going to be 2 of 3 over 2 squared minus 3 of 3 over 2 plus 1, which if you put into a calculator is equal to 1. And you can start to see this cycle already of 1 and then minus a half and then 1. And you can confirm this by figuring out x4 by just looking at this and then k here is 3 over 2. So it's going to be um, as 
x3 is 1, it's going to be 1 squared minus k, which is 3 over 2, and then xn, which is 1. This would be the um, x4 because we're plugging in x3, and if you put this into a calculator, this is equal to minus a half. So you can see we have this cycle here. So this cycle has an order of 2, and we're adding up to 100, and this has, um, has an order of 2. So therefore, this cycle occurs 50 times, because it happens once here, and then once here, and then it will happen 50 times, because it's a cycle of 2, because it goes up to 100. So 1 plus minus a half is just equal to 1 minus a half, which is equal to a half. So this is the sum of one of the cycles, and there are 50 of these cycles. So therefore, the answer to this is just 50 times a half. What happens when 50 of these cycles occur, which is going to be equal to 25? And that's the answer. This value here is equal to 25. So again, with these questions, they're quite common. Figure out a pattern of how it works. We figured out that a cycle goes on here. We figured out the cycle occurs 50 times, and we figured out that each cycle is a half when you add it together. So therefore, it gives out the answer of 25. So for question 2 part A, we're given this recurrence relation like this, and we need to find expressions for A2 and A3 in terms of K. So we know, we know what A1 is, A1 is equal to 1, so therefore A2 is going to be equal to what happens if we plug A1 into this, so it's going to be K of AN, so it's going to be 1 plus 1 over 1, which is of course going to be, this is just going to be 2, and we don't need to write the 1 denominator, so this is just going to be equal to 2k, so a2 is equal to 2k, so therefore a3 is going to be what happens when we plug a2 into here, so what happens when we plug 2k into here, so it's going to be k of a n, so 2k plus 1, and this is going to be over a n, so it's going to be over 2 k and this is going to be equal to we can cancel out the k's like this just to give 2k plus 1 over 2 so a3 is equal to 2k plus 1 over 2 and those are the two expressions for a2 and a3 so for part b we're given this sigma notation here and we're told this equal to 10 and therefore we need to find the exact value for k now as i said before recurrence relations are usually not going to be arithmetic or geometric so as we talked about in the sigma notation video with using like sn and stuff like that in the formula booklet we usually won't be able to do it this way we're going to have to find some sort of pattern or other way in order to do it and the key to this one is to realize that this is a really small amount of numbers it's just r is equal to 1 r is equal to 2 and r is equal to 3 so we're just adding a1 plus a2 plus a3 because remember the r is here and it's r is equal to 1 r is equal to 2 and r is equal to 3 and we know these values we know a1 is equal to 1 and we know a2 and a3 we've got expressions for them in terms of k so we can equal this to 10 and then find the exact value for k so it's going to be a1 which is 1 plus a2 which down here is 2k plus a3 which is 2k plus 1 over 2, this is equal to 10. And we can rearrange in order to find the value of k. I'm going to rewrite this as 1 plus 2k plus, and then I'm going to separate this into k plus a half is equal to 10. And this is going to be 3k plus 3 over 2 is equal to 10. Move the 3 over 2 onto the other side to do 3k is equal to 17 over 2. And then divide both sides by 3 to get k is equal to 17 over 6. So k is equal to 17 over 6 and that's the final answer.